I only have two more episodes, you guys. It's episode 498. Two episodes left of Busy Living Sober. And then we are off to the races with Conversations with Busy. You guys, are you wondering why I'm doing this? Or do you totally get it? Are you like, oh my gosh, I totally get why you're doing this. You just need something new. And the reality is, is that's true. I have been doing this for eight years and I've always wanted to expand. And the craziest thing is, um, all the times whenever I'm out in public and I say to somebody, oh, they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I have a podcast. And they're like, oh, really? What's the topic? And I'm like, sobriety. They're like, well, I'm not sober. And why am I going to listen to your podcast? And I totally get it. If I weren't sober, I don't think I'd be listening to sober podcasts. Mm. So Conversations with Busy is born. It's going to be coming out soon. And I'm so excited because I'm working on all the graphics with my friend Doss and we're doing it together and it's just been, it's fun. And then I have my assistant Candace helping me. So it's like, we're all coming up with this amazing like idea and we're going to, congl- it's all going to be amazing. All these women supporting women. And I'm beyond thrilled that I'm going to be introducing this to you guys in just like a literally a week and a half. I can't even believe it. It's going to be so exciting. I guess it will be the first episode after Thanksgiving, you guys, because Thanksgiving is a week from Thursday, tomorrow. Can you believe it? Crazy. Crazy. It is Thanksgiving. Time is flying by. I feel like um, the election, for better or worse, was definitely a time stinker. And um, we it just went, dee, 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 dee. time went flying by during the election. And now it's over. Thank you, God. And we can move on to bigger and better things. And I feel like there's definitely like some things happen with a lightness in the air and everything else that we are living in. And it's just nice. So now that's over for right now. And we are now going to focus on good things. And we're going to focus on You know, I don't know if we're necessarily completely out of the woods when it comes to, you know, wars and all that. I understand that they could be over sooner than we thought, but, you know, Donald Trump isn't going to be president until January. So things are still happening in the world that could be a little frightening, but it's time to go to more faith. I'm all about the faith these days, you guys. It is all about faith. And I don't know if any of you listen to the podcast with Tucker Carlson and. Oh my gosh, I just literally lost his name. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to look this up. Wait a minute. Give me one second to tell you what this guy's name is. Because I, do you guys ever have these moments where you're just like, oh, what am I, what am I thinking about? Um, Hello. The Hello followers name is Alex Jones. That's it. Alex Jones. It's so funny because you think Alex Jones, and I don't know if any of you guys know who the Alex Jones is that talks like this. And when his name was Alex Jones, I was like, wait a minute, Alex Jones from um, Mega Wars and all that. He's like, oh my God, the world's coming to an end. Um, this Alex Jones, who is the co-founder and CEO of Halo, was on Tucker Carlson's show. And it was such a great show and it was so interesting because so many things he said I could relate to for me personally for one he talked about how he had been doing meditation and he had been more secular and he'd been doing like you know go on and he didn't name the apps but I can imagine as well as you can how many meditation apps there are out there and they're definitely not all Christian based and in fact none of the ones I used prior to Halo were Christian based so I would go and I'd put these meditations on and he wanted to start Halo so we could have uh, something that actually not only was meditation, but also brought in his religious components of his Christianity and Catholicism. So he, there he goes and he builds, um, he builds Halo and he, um, he, the word came to him because you knew Halo be thy name. And that's how he got Halo. And, um, that has been amazing that he I love that name hallow be his name and so he changed he used the word hallow and he said if only five people listen to it that's all that matters I totally can relate to that and then 
he talked about last Lent, this past Lent, I, I think he was speaking of 2024. And that's so ironic because in 2024 is the first time that I decided to get the Halo app. And so obviously I'm not alone. I think there were a lot of people that decided I've got to go get into more spiritual life, a more religious life. I've got to get closer to God. How am I going to do it? And Halo was presented and so many people like I did said, you know what, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to get a subscription. And for me, it's been a game changer. As you guys all know, as of last April, it was like, wait a minute, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to sign up for a challenge. They have all these challenges all the time in October. They had a challenge for the rosary. They have an upcoming one starting um, on December 1st for Advent for the month of December. Just like on December 1st, my new Bible study starts. It's kind of fun. But anyway, when I started doing this, and he talked about how many people had written out, written to him and said this was a life, this was a game changer in their life because they went from not really practicing anything to going, oh my gosh, I want more, I want more, I want more. And it's so funny because when I was listening to the, you know, Lent last year, that's where I listened to Jim Wahlberg. If you're listening to this or somebody who's listening knows Jim Wahlberg, if we could help get him on the show, it'd be amazing because that's still a dream of mine because literally that was a catalyst. So I was listening to that podcast of Jim Wahlberg's testimony of sobriety and this is story just a story and tears are running down my eyes and I'm like I have to get him on my show phone calls led to Ann Vucek Ann Vucek led to going do you want to go to Medjugorje which led to Medjugorje which is now led to here I am and praying the rosary every day and listening every morning to Halo and it has again been a game changer and I think about it and I, I it gave me the courage, I guess, to, to do the things I'm doing. It gave me more sense of like, this isn't just me. Like God is working through me because I pray every time I go on the air with you guys, anytime I have a guest on, I'm like, wait a minute, before we start recording, we have to pray. And, um, which then takes it out of me and puts it in God's hands. So if five people listen or 500 people listen, it's up to God and not up to me. And it's that ego we have to break down. It's so, so hard, I think, as a human being, to let go of your ego. Like, to get to this place that you're like, I'm just going to let go. I'm going to trust. I'm going to let go. I'm going to trust. It is so hard. It's so humbling. It's so humbling to say, you know what? I don't know. And I'm going to take direction. And like, you have to get that, at least for me, I had to get that beaten up that I was like willing to do whatever somebody else gave me, you know, told me to do when I was first getting sober because I hadn't done life sober ever before. I'd always done life, you know, cocktails inside of me. And, um, the people I went to for advice were also had cocktails inside of them. It wasn't that my whole network had to change and my whole outlook on how I was going to perceive life moving forward was going to be from a view of, of a sober view and not of a view of escapism and a view of blaming other people. It was more of like, I've got to take responsibility. I have to grow up. And I don't know if you, about you guys, but growing up is hard sometimes. In fact, it's really hard. And I didn't grow, start growing up until I was 37. So I was a late bloomer, obviously. And I had kids already, houses. I'd done all that stuff. But like really taking responsibility is hard. Taking responsibility for ourselves, our actions, how we affect others is really, um, it takes thought. It takes um, an ability to go and raise up and look down at your life and say, I did this, I did that, I take, I own that. And it's, it's hard. It's hard. You know, for me, I, I, um, it's, I, I am a definitely a fleer of relationships when things get tough. It's just how I am. I'm, I'm working on it and I work on it every day and I am trying to build relationships back up with people in my past. And that's been slowly, slowly, slowly not jumping in. Um, my relationship with my husband, as I've mentioned before, has like gotten richer and richer and richer because I don't know everything. 
you guys, I don't know everything. I just know I can share what's happened to me in an honest way. But what happened to me might not work for you, and that's okay. And I put a lot of effort in certain things, and sometimes they don't work out. Like, of course, my goal if I'm helping somebody is, like, for them to get, like, sobriety forever and be on this beam. And that is, um, that's more my thing than it is. I think it is the other person's. I, I think that everybody should want to have this life that's like amazing that you can just say, oh my gosh, I'm letting go. It's um, the three steps in Alcoholics Anonymous, which I've mentioned many times, are very beneficial to me is that one, I'm powerless over everything. I'm powerless over the weather. I'm powerless over my kids. I'm powerless over my husband. I'm powerless over politicians. I'm powerless over everything. What, what's happening in the ocean? What's happening in the wind? All of that I have no power over. So that's like humbling, isn't it? Because you can say, you know what? I've got no power. I got no power. And this happens to you every day, you guys. That's why I always mention it. And then number two, I had to come to believe in a power greater than myself, to which I call God. And I think that putting it to God rather than the doorknob, which I think is brilliant that they did this in the 12 step rooms so for me, I think it needs to go a little deeper, like, like have some real meat to it and real substance like it can't just be so like oh it's just gonna be it's just gonna be whatever i want to be it's just gonna be the door now it's just gonna be this go drugs it's just gonna be this i think it really i think to really like take this to the next level you really need to believe in something bigger than yourself and is it allah is it buddha is it jehovah is it but something that has a history and meat to it and comes with it some forms of you know another blueprint for living let's say in christianity there's another blueprint so you have the blueprint from the 12 steps and then you have this blueprint from you know christianity which is so amazing this blueprint of life and where you see things and i love that ben shapiro says said many times that the best self-help book in the world is the bible and it's just it's just a game changer when you can believe and i gotta believe in a power greater than myself i gotta believe in something that's bigger and good right it has to be good it can't be something you believe in bigger that's an ogre or something dark um no not for me um, you know me, I'm a, I am a butterflies, Tinkerbell kind of girl and love fairies and all that. So it's definitely going to be something big and it's going to be something good. And Jesus is so big and he's so good. And he just loves all of us so much. And it's our egos and our fears, this fear and this darkness that's been around for a long time uh, of recent years. But in the Bible, it says numerous times, do not fear for I have you. Do not fear. Do not feel shame. I've got you. I've forgiven you. Now it's time for you to take care of you. And that means what? That means lessening our egos by going, you know what? My ego is so big. My ego is so big. I think I got this and I got nothing. I can say to this day, I don't have anything. I have my sobriety over 18 years of not picking up a drink, but I have to live in God's will each and every day. I can't do it for yesterday and I can't do it for tomorrow. I have to do it for today. I have to turn my will over every day. I have to get up in the morning, even though this morning we had workmen here at 7.15. My neighbor was in my yard at 7.15 this morning. I was like, hello? <laughs> it's 7.15, I'm in bed. And I jump up and I didn't have as much prayer time this morning as I would like to, but this afternoon and this evening, I'm going to do a little bit more. But Back to the Alex Jones of, um, you know, Alex Jones. Oh, by the way, step three is letting go. By the way, letting go. But when I was listening to Alex Jones on Tucker Carlson's show, and he was talking about what he does every day. And it's kind of funny because I feel like, again, one of the steps in Alcoholics Anonymous is, um, is prayer and meditation. And we all, oh, by the way, if you're watching me on video and you're like, what is this I'm drinking? It's beet juice with turmeric, ginger, an apple, a lemon. And um, it's just my drink for right now. Mm. It's a little sour and I keep drinking it. But anyway, um, I just lost this. Okay, so Alex Jones talks, so, and at the 12 Steps talks about prayer and meditation. 
And I remember that when it was time for me to get to those steps um, years ago, and it was like prayer meditation, I'm like, I am never going to be able to meditate. I don't know what you people are talking about. See, I'm going to sit here and go, mm, I don't have any thoughts. Every time I tried to be in that place of, mm, of Zen and meditation, um, all I would think about was the laundry. What am I going to make for dinner? Is the dishwasher cleaned out? Did I let the dogs out? Did I turn off the hair dryer? We always turn off the hair dryer. Did I turn off the curling iron? Did I unplug what I was supposed to unplug? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So you think about all these things. Do I need to take my car to the car wash? What do I need to do? So all these thoughts are banging in your head and you're like, how am I supposed to meditate? How am I supposed to feel Zen if all I'm thinking about is all my chores? And I, of course, went and took a class at the University of Pennsylvania. And it was a meditation course. And I learned there that you will always have thoughts until you die. Um, it's just what you do with those thoughts. And so when I did that, I learned how to meditate. And as time is, you know, time comes and goes. And, you know, I, if you're anything like me, you know, I, I do some things for a little bit of time and then I stop doing them and then I pick them up and then I stop and then I pick them up and then I stop and then I maybe pivot something here and there. And that has given me the, um, the ability to see different types of meditation and not be so hard on myself when I don't do it, even though I love doing it. So, you know, in the beginning, we learned how to do one minute of meditation, just literally just breathing in and out. And Alex from Halo, his meditations that he does, he does 20 minutes, he says, every day. He takes 20 minutes in just silence. Because I think prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to God. He came up with the name Halo. Hello be thy name and the name of his app from listening. It was like when I was sitting here thinking about changing the name, you know, I've thought about it so many times and I've kind of done it like a little half ass if I'm going to be honest, that I've been like, oh, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. But this time I'm, I'm going full tilt and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out and that's okay. If it does work out, great. I'm psyched. But um, it's just something that I felt like God brought to me. And I woke up in the middle of the, you know, four o'clock in the morning, jumped out of bed, got on my computer, da -da 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 -da, started playing with it and just decided let's do it. Conversations with busy. And I think if we all take this time in our lives just to get quiet, there's so much noise, computers, telephones, apps, 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 social media, social media, social media, and um, noise, noise, noise. It's so nice just to get quiet at times. And as hard as it seemed for so long, it was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't get quiet because my brain was kind of like a pink, like if you, do you remember those old pinball machines where you'd go and you'd pull it back and the ball would go up and then it would go ding, 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 ding. And I have to tell you, for a long time, that's how my brain was. My brain was constantly going ding, 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 ding. It was literally moving constantly and going from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. Now, I never, ever said, knew that I had ADD. It was not actually a thing, I don't think. When I was a kid growing up after being born in 1968. But fast forward to today, one of my closest friends always says to me, You have ADD. And I'm like, Okay, I do. I do. And then my husband's like, Yeah, you do. Because I will be in the middle of doing one thing and I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to go over there and I'm going to go over there. So when I was getting sober and had those feelings of like, oh my gosh, I'm going from this thing to that thing, to this thing, to that thing, to over the hill, to over the mountain, to the, oh, to, 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 to the beach, to the ocean, now where did I come back to? And can any of you think of, like, relate to that? How exhausting is that? You're constantly just like, ding, ding, ding. And at least for me, I could barely get anything done. So... You know, getting sober and learning this tool was so 
freeing. It was like this thing that I thought was going to be so painful, like sitting there and just being quiet and having thoughts was going to be painful because I had scary thoughts from my past that would come into my head, come racing in. And I think that I'd become these old thoughts. But I learned to replace the old thoughts with new thoughts. You know, it's like really replacing things. And when Alex Jones started Halo, it literally, he brought us a gift that is like, not only is he teaching us to meditate and teaching us the word of the Lord, but it's also teaching us how to just be and realize that God is what's important. God is what's important because I don't know if it's because of my age and, you know, being 56 years old, but, you know, you think about you, I mean, I've already lost one parent and lost many friends have died. You know, I don't know if a lot of people that are 56 have lost as many friends or it's not a competition, but I know that I've lost, you know, some of my my closest ever friends, ever friends are gone now. And um, so I know that like, we're all going to die. It's imminent, right? We are all going to die. And, but the closer I, you know, I, being in my fifties, it's like, it's right there, right? What's going to happen one day. And um, what do I want the, this last part of my life to look like? What if it's 20 years, if it's 30 years, if it's 40 years, whatever it may be, that I'm here, I want to make it relative. I want to make it so that I am enjoying my life and that I am taking it in and not like wishing time away. I remember when I was younger, I always wished time away. When are we going to get to this? When are we going to get to that? I wish this would happen. I wish that would happen. Da, 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 da. And I can't wait till they grow up. I can't wait till they carry their own bags. I can't wait to, this of course is referring to my children. And here we get to at this age, at least of the fifties for me and go, oh my gosh, why did I wish that time away? It was so, it was such an amazing time and it went by so fast. And I, when I was younger, parent, people would say to me, oh my gosh, enjoy your kids because it's going to go by so fast. And I, when you're in the middle of it, you're like, no, it's not. It's taking forever. But when you look at it and you think about it in perspective, it happens so fast that you, they go from being literally babies to out the door, having their own babies. And for me personally, I feel like that this time of, of knowing that you know, life is fleeting and it's only once. And while we're here, I want to enjoy it. And I'm, I hope that I go to heaven when I die. And what is it going to take to do that? Like, what tools do I need to be doing? And what tools do I need to be using so that I am honest, loving and caring to all? And I try to help others. And sometimes I try and it falls on deaf ears. And I have to have the courage to say it's, this isn't working and I wish you the best. And I've had to do that recently, which was hard, but I, I realized that I wasn't helping a person and that was hard, but that's humbling, right? It's humbling when God says, guess what? You can't help this one. And you're like, wait a minute. I want to, I want to help him so bad. No, 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 no. And you have to go, okay, I surrender. I can't help this person. I got to keep moving. That takes courage. It takes courage to say, you know, something isn't working. It takes courage to say, to stand up for yourself and say, you know, I've done my best. And if my best isn't good enough for you, that's, that's okay. But it's not good enough for me. And that's again, owning ourselves. It's like, do people want, I was listening to this thing this morning and I don't have it right next to me, so I can't repeat it verbatim, but I can repeat it as what I remember. And this morning when I was listening to this um, I think it was Mark Wahlberg. I can't remember who it was, but anyway, on Halo, I'll, I'm going to post it on here just so you can have it. Go look in the description. But I, I, to paraphrase what it said was that, you know, we, it, 
getting more humble is like the goal of life. Let's just face it. It's getting, it's like less Elizabeth and more God, less Elizabeth, more God, less Elizabeth, more God, like constantly. It's like less of my ego and less of this material, like the material person that I want to be or what I've been forever. It's changing that and getting this closer to prayer, closer to real relationships, closer to you know, just surrendering and just being in the moments and not really being upset if the, what I deem to be right doesn't happen. It's going, okay, then that wasn't meant to be. And having the courage and the fortitude to say, you know what, it's not, that it's okay. That didn't work out the way I was, I wanted it to, but God had a different plan. And that is just so amazing to say that God had another plan and not and not put it as your bad person or somebody else is a bad person or put blame on somebody else and just say it wasn't meant to be. And that's humbling to say, you know what, it's not meant to be. Something didn't work out. That square peg that I was trying to put into that round hole didn't work out. And it's not because I haven't done everything I can. I tried to put it in there and it doesn't want to go because it doesn't fit. I got to let it go now and walk away. And that is truly, truly humbling to go and finally go. I, I get it. I got to get, I get it. You've told me enough, God, this is not, this is not going to work out. This is not in God's plan. So you need to buckle up and just say, I got it and just surrender. And it takes a lot to just go surrender. I spent many years going, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. And I have to tell you that as of late, learning to just let go is so free. It is so freeing just to go, I just got to let go. I don't know what's supposed to happen. God has a plan. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, well, then it's not meant to be. Well, that's enough of me, isn't it? Oh my gosh, square pegs, round holes, new podcast cover, new podcast name, all of it's happening. Here we go. Are you ready for the ride? I hope you are. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, subscribe. Go to my website, elizabethchance.com. Sign up for my newsletter that will go right into your inbox on Friday mornings at 10 a.m. And you will also get alerted to new podcasts every Monday and Wednesday that they are dropped. And again, this is episode 498, one of my last times here for me to sing my little jingle. We're getting a new jingle and everything, so here we go. Until next time, everybody, keep getting busy.